Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is one in a series that I'm doing about uh, particle systems in the Unreal Engine using the Niagara plugin, uh, which is relatively new. Um, and in this one, I'm going to talk about the uh, particle spawn stage in uh, particle systems. Uh, if you don't know what that means, you probably need to be watching some of the other videos that come before this in the series. So I'm going to quickly, uh, so as always I should say, I've just got a third person template uh, set up here. Um, and I'm going to create a, a quick Niagara system um, using selected initers. And I'm just going to use the omnidirectional burst and call that MS line because it's mine. And open that up. And uh, you can see we've got this burst thing going on here. Um, and the bit that we're looking at is this particle spawn section. So uh, these things here. So actually what I'm going to do is just do a, a quick change to make this so that it keeps looping. Um, so change that to a bit in the state. So it keeps going over and over again. There we go. <coughs> right. So as you can see in this particular instance, there are several modules here in the particle spawn. Um, we've got initialized particle, calculate size and rotational inertia by mass, uh, sphere location, and add velocity from points. And I'm going to go through um, three out of the four of those um, because we're not going to really talk about the calculate size and rotational inertia by mass much. Um, as is the same for all these videos in this series. What I'm not intending to do is give you a comprehensive guide to all the things that you could do in particle systems. The um, uh, the range and variety is enormous, and the complexity is quite deep. What I really want to do is to uh, give you the tools to get started and to understand some of what's going on inside these bits of uh, the different sections. Uh, so let's start with initialized particle. So this is uh, giving, as you probably guessed, giving some initial values to your particle when it's created. Um, and again, I'm not going to show you all the bits in here, but let's have a, a look at some of them. So lifetime mode is doing random. Uh, so that's a random number between these limits, what, uh, 1 and 2.5. So let's quickly make changes, make that. Ooh. I put 5 in, I wanted 0 0.5 and 0 0.7. I'm just going to make them live less long. And hopefully you can see in over there in the um, preview, they're not living as long. And if we change it to 10 and 20, then they're lasting longer. But actually they're falling through the floor before they have time to disappear. So they look more persistent, but actually, as we get higher in these numbers, because we've got a gravity effect on them, um, it's not making a lot of difference. So uh, let's bring it a little bit small now. Yeah, just not point two to twenty. No, thank you. Two. I'm going to do uh, between one and two. I'll do. All right. Uh, Next down, color. They're white, so uh, we can select this color and choose a different color. Let's make them a nice purple color. Now they are. They're all a nice purple color. Very easy. Uh, so that's a direct set color, so all of them get the same color. Um, I'm going to change that to a random range. Um, so what this does is it chooses a random color, but it does it between two limits. Uh, so it's in some ways, it's not the easiest or the best way to get any kind of random color. But if you wanted to do kind of similar colors, so for example, if you've got uh, some kind of spark system, you might want to have them between red and yellow. Uh, why didn't that pick? So red, that's because this often catches me out in Unreal. We've got to pull that slide up. You need to pay attention to this new one here, because that's what it's actually going to be. So we've got between orange and white there, and Give this a yellowy color. Yeah, and hopefully that looks a bit like yeah, maybe it looks like sparks. It might look more so if it was continuous, but 
that was fine. So we could set whatever colors we want there. I'm going to um, pass over a few of these here and not worry about them. And uh, we've got sprite size mode is unset. So uh, that's curious. And um, I'll show you why that is in, the, uh, in a minute. Uh, so we're going to change that to random uniform. So this should change the size of the sprites. And just to prove it, I'm going to make them 500 to 1,000. There. Has it affected it? No. And the reason why is because of this module here, which is calculate size and rotational inertia by mass. Now, in the initialized particle, we've actually I skipped over it. We've got an onset. We've got a mass of one set, but this one sets density by material, and it's simulating steel for some reason, um, which does something to the mass, and then it has proportions which are um, set to one one one, so that this is overriding the setting of the size by the initialized particle. And if you remember, as we uh, within any group, these modules um, are evaluated in order from top to bottom, and so this is overriding the settings from that. So in order to get those big sprites, we need to just Turn that on and off. I'm not particularly bothered. Now they're now huge. Um, and we're going to drag that into the one of these into the scene and see what it looks like. The kind of starburst effect. That's probably not that useful. We set those at really quite high, but we have certainly demonstrated now that we're using these. Let's set these to 10 to 20. Okay. So um these may be less useful than the little sparks, but they're easier to see. So I'm quite happy with that. We can see the kind of yellow and orangey stuff going on there with the different colors. Um, I'm going to skip over the rotation UV mode. The mesh scale uh, mode is, so as far as I understand, this is inactive in this, um, in this emitter because we're using a sprite renderer. And so these uh, particles are being rendered as sprites. They're uh, little squares that are uh, directed to face the camera wherever you go. So it looks like they're spheres, but they're not actually. Um, and so any settings here would only apply if you're using a mesh renderer rather than a sprite renderer. Uh, in another video to come, I will talk about the different or some of the different render options. So, that's initialized particle. Well, we've disabled this one, and we've got sphere location and add velocity from point. So, uh, we can probably kind of work out the idea of what's going on here, but uh, one useful thing to do often is just to switch off a module to see what effect it's having. So, if we switch off that module, we can see that now these uh, particles are being created in quite a small area, and they're just dropping. So there is a gravity effect on them, and that's in the particle updates, which we're not going to talk about. Um, but with this switched on, they kind of spread outwards. And let's have a look at the parameters here. We've got uh, minimum 75, maximum 400. And we've actually got a, an origin offset. So um, what this is doing is it's adding a velocity to each of these particles, um, and it's taking an initial uh offset from minus seven so it's dr it's dropping the origin for the velocity down from where the particles are being created so that they're always being pushed somewhat upwards so let's kind of prove that by doing changing that to positive seven and they should they shouldn't have that kind of upwards inertia at the start and that's that seems absolutely correct and i've done 70 not seven so um so that's quite a pleasing effect where it pushes them upwards. Let's also um, change the bounds of this. Let's change it from 400 to 2,000. I'll actually change that to 20,000. And that's giving them a huge burst out from the centre now. Um, so we can see that... Um, 
that velocity is having a huge effect. Uh, what were we on? Let's change this back to 30 to 100 or so. That's not huge. I think it was 400. That's more like it. Okay. So the last bit to talk about is the sphere location. Um, and uh, I, I think one of the best ways to demonstrate this possibly is to um, take off the velocity and switch off the gravity, and you can see how you know, the gravity force. And so what we're getting is our particles are being created in a sphere, randomly within that sphere. It's not a big sphere. Let's just uh, increase the size of that to oh, 200. And so they're being created in a larger sphere now. We might want a bigger density. That's in the uh, spawn burst. So let's up that to a thousand. So often, if you're changing the size of your spawn area, you need to change the density as well to um, to match that. Depending on what kind of effect you're after, or off, obviously, right. So it's easier possibly to see that in action in the world. So let's uh, have a look. There we go. We can see that repeating over and over again. And if we click play. You can go to the big screen. You can see that we've got a large sphere in which those particles are being created. So let's stop that. Um, let's have a look at some of the other options. So we'll um, disable that sphere location, and you can see they're all being created at a point now. And there are other location uh, modules you can have. Box location, cone location, cylinder location. So uh, I'm going to come down here to torus location. So I don't know if you know what a torus is. It's kind of a donut shape. And as I um, look around that, you can see that that's a donut. We can make this a really big donut. What ten thousand? And um, so that's the kind of outer shape. Ten thousand is huge. Let's look at a thousand. That's better. Um, and as you can see, it's now a thin but very wide ring. And this radius is how thick the tube is. So if we hold it up that to 100, we get more of an effect like that. I'm just going to stick the velocity from point back on again um, and actually get them to. Spark outwards from a just from a central point. So we can change that to zero. And let's have a look at that in the world. So we've got a ring of particles being created and they're just sparking out in the world. That's quite a nice effect. There we go. We'll just do one more. We'll do the box uh, location. So uh, again, we'll we'll leave the other settings. We'll just switch off that. We can obviously bin it. So we can do that. And so we're out from the point at the moment. And I'm going to do box location. And I'm going to, this is a fairly small box. I'm going to change this to, let's do that. And I'm going to do that. But we'll leave it quite narrow in the x direction and because it's huge again we want to um, up the number of particles and i'm going to have a look at that and this was i kind of chose values that were spread through the whole of this little level that we've got um, but it's happening in a constrained z area uh, there we go. So we've had a look at um, some of these uh, things that are available in the uh, spawn, particle spawn section. Uh, we've seen some initialized particle um, variables here. We've got this add velocity from points, which gives it an initial velocity as it moves out. And uh, we've got the location stuff. As always, of course, there's loads of stuff that I haven't covered. 
but hopefully i mean these are the main things that you might want it's certainly good to understand these particular modules and hopefully that gives you a, a good basis uh, to get going so in the next video i'm going to talk about the particle update section but that's it from me for now mm -hmm.